All right, hey everybody, welcome back to another video. I am Garrett Gillette. I am a pro photographer in the Chicagoland area. Thank you very much for stopping by the channel. I really appreciate it. What uh, we try to do here is focus on rustic and rural and kind of farm country, uh, anything nostalgic, and we also dive into some Lightroom stuff. We dive into some Photoshop stuff whatever we feel like diving into that particular day. So today, actually diving into the focus shift feature of the Nikon D850. So thanks for joining me and let's go. All right, first things first, what is focus shift? Focus shift and focus stacking are the same thing. They're interchangeable terms. Nikon calls this feature focus shift. So what is focus shift and focus stacking? Basically, when you have a composition where you want to get tack sharp focus from the very front of the image all the way through to the back of the image, you really need to do something like focus, focus stacking. Because as, even as good as the lenses are today, and even if you stop all the way down to f22 or above, you're still not going to get everything in tack sharp focus and we'll show you that in just a minute. So what landscape photographers do and macro photographers do, and basically any photographer, if their main objective is to get that tack sharp focus from front to back, they're going to take multiple exposures and blend them in some sort of software, typically Lightroom. Let's say they're going to do a five shot focus stack or focus shift. Uh, they're going to focus on the first thing in the foreground of the image. Then they're going to go, you know, roughly a fifth of the way into the image, focus on something else. Another step, focus on something else. Another step, focus on something else. And then the last one, you're going to focus on infinity or the thing that's furthest away from your lens. Then you're going to take those images into Photoshop. You're going to align them. You're going to blend them and uh, theoretically you're going to have a tack sharp image front to back when you blend them all together. Now yes you can do this manually but Nikon basically done it so you can do it internally and there's a lot of different variations that you can add to it which makes it very helpful for like if you're going to shoot macro or if you're going to shoot landscape because it's two different step widths and we'll talk about that in a second. All right, so with all that being said, now we're going to jump into the practical explanation of how this is all done. First thing you want to do is get your camera mounted on your tripod. And then make sure your camera body and your lens are both in autofocus. And since you're on a tripod, you're going to want to turn your image stabilization off. On the D850, you're going to want to press this button here and turn the upper command dial to set your focus point to single point. Then make sure you don't have your bracketing turned on and then you're ready to go. For this example, I'm using my Sigma 105 millimeter one-to-one -one macro lens and just these Hershey Kisses to see if we can use focus shift to get a tack sharp image front to back. All right, so on the back of the camera, you're gonna hit the menu button and then you're gonna scroll to the photo shooting menu. Once in the photo shooting menu, you're gonna have to scroll down or you might have to scroll down towards the bottom. Then you'll see focus shift shooting. If focus shift shooting is grayed out on your D850, then go back and check all those settings that I talked about earlier and make sure that you have them all to autofocus or bracketing turned off or single point focus. I'm sure it's just going to be a minor correction and then you'll be ready to go. So now here's where you're going to set up your focus stack. You're going to choose your number of shots. Number of shots is going to be totally dependent on what you're shooting. If you're shooting a nice wide uh, Vista landscape type of image you might have to go up to seven eight shots I would say at the most and your step width is going to be a little bit further I would say you know either halfway or you know all the way up to like eight for your step width if you're shooting macro and you want a tack sharp image 
of uh, the eye on uh, some kind of beetle or something like that, then you're going to want to go narrow and increase the number of shots. Maybe you'll go up to 30, maybe you go up to 50. I'm, I'm not exactly sure. It's gonna take a little bit of experimentation on, on your part to really kind of dial that in. I like to have exposure smoothing on and I just leave silent photography on. It doesn't really make a difference to me. But, uh, and I do not use uh, the, the storage folder. Then I hit start and the camera does its thing. You'll know it's working because you'll see lights flashing on the back on the uh, dial up on the upper left and you'll see the green light flashing right next to the LCD screen. All right, so now we've shot 30 images at a step width of six. Just needed to get them into the card reader and onto the MacBook Air and then upload them into Lightroom. And that's where I'm just gonna do a quick, real simple minor correction to the very first image. And then I'll sync that with all the other images. If you're not sure exactly how those steps are done, just ping me. I can uh, easily walk through it with you or even do a, a video about it. So right here, I just went into the develop panel in Lightroom. And honestly, I think I'm just going to do auto white balance and um, a global auto exposure for, again, for the first image in the, in the sequence. Okay, after I do that minor processing, I then hold shift and click on the last image in the row and then click on sync check all the boxes here and then I'm going to hit synchronize and that's going to process all of them in a row. Now this might be a little confusing but I processed all 30 images in the row, in the sequence but I probably won't need all 30 of them. And to find out where the focus starts to fall off after the last Hershey kiss you literally just go through the images starting at the back. So I started at number 30 and just kind of worked my way back checking for focus. And uh, I ended up needing, I want to say, only like 16 of the images, something like that. Because after the 16th one, it fell out of focus behind that last Hershey kiss. So at that point, I then highlight the images I want to pull over into Photoshop, then I go to edit, uh, right click, and then edit in, and then scroll down and open as layers in Photoshop. And then with this many images, it's gonna be a little bit of a wait. But once all your images are in Photoshop, you're going to highlight the top one, then scroll down to the bottom, shift click the bottom one, and then you're going to go over to edit. I'm sorry, it's not showing up here in the video, but you're going to go to edit and then align layers. And I usually just use auto and Sometimes I use the lens corrections, but not, not very often. Then hit OK, and it will start to process and align the layers. And Photoshop is aligning these layers like to the pixel. So even on a tripod, you can see in the lower left corner how it was off a little bit. Now with all of my layers still highlighted, I'm going to go back to edit, scroll down until I see auto blend layers. And I'm going to click on that and I'm going to click on stack. You have two options, one for panorama, one for stack. And then I do check the box for content to wear fill and the seamless tone. Can't tell you if it really makes any difference, but I do check those. And then obviously let uh, Photoshop do its magic. And then boom, we've got a image that is 
crystal clear, tack sharp, front to back. Uh, pretty slick, if you ask me. So now at this point, I'm just going to delete all the layers except for the merged layer. Then I'll save the merged layer, which will shoot it right back over to Lightroom. And to, and to delete those layers, I'm just going to click on the one right beneath the merge layer, scroll down to the bottom, shift click the bottom layer, then I'm going to drag them all to the trash can. You can also right click and delete. Alright, so once you are back in Lightroom, you'll know which image is the merged one because it's going to be a TIFF file. So just find that and you can see here I'm just kind of scrolling in. This is the very back. Here's the very front. Amazing job done by the D850 with the internal focus shift as well as the blending and aligning capabilities of Photoshop. All right, so that is it. Internal focus stacking with the Nikon D850, sending them over to Photoshop, aligning and blending in Photoshop, and then bringing them back over into Lightroom. Not a very hard process. If I can do it, any one of you can do it as well. I'm not a Photoshop master expert. I'm pretty much a novice at Photoshop and pretty decent at Lightroom. But uh, trust me, if I can do this process, you guys can do it as well. And if you're thinking, hey, I could just stop down to, you know, F22 or above and, and try to get everything in focus or do a manual focus stack, you know, take an image in the foreground, an image in the midground, and then one in the background. I did that too as a test, and next week I'll, I'm going to show you the results of that test, so, so stick around, and uh, you guys all know the drill. Like it if you did, subscribe if you haven't, ring the notification bell, drop, a, drop me a comment, and uh, hopefully you all got something out of this, and if you did, please let me know. And uh, with that, hey, I am Garrick, and I am your very best friend in the whole wide world. We'll see you next week, everybody. Bye-bye.